Hello, investors, and welcome to our session here today. So have you ever had the situation where you put on a short vertical and you inadvertently forgot about it or possibly got stuck out of town? Maybe your car broke down and you weren't there to cover that situation over the expiration. Well, today we want to talk about a little bit about what could happen in those types of events, as well as review our existing positions and also look for new positions to open up as well. Before we get too far along though, let's go ahead and pop through our disclosures and just remind our investors that options do carry a high level risk and are not suitable for all investors. The information here is for general informational purposes only. Should not be considered an individualized recommendation or endorsement of any particular security chart pattern or investment strategy. Schwab does not recommend the use of technical analysis as the sole means of investment research. For the sake of simplicity, the examples of this presentation do not take into consideration commission and other transaction fees. We do use the paper money software application. This is for educational purposes only. We want to keep in mind that successful virtual trading during one time period does not guarantee successful investing of actual funds during a later time period as market conditions do change continuously. And also, it's important to remember, investors, that short options can be assigned at any time up to expiration, regardless of the in-the-money amount. An in-the-money option has a higher risk of being assigned early. It's important to keep that in mind because the paper money virtual trading application will not assign a short position early, which is different from what could occur in a real trading account. We'll discuss the option Greeks as we go along with regards to our discussion here. Also, do remember the past performance of any security or strategy does not guarantee future results or success. And just a little bit of a heads up, our upcoming technical analysis and option strategies workshops are just right around the corner, coming up here in Atlanta on March 22nd and 23rd. That's going to be at the Buckhead Hotel and Convention Center. Then we have another one on Scottsdale, April 26th and 27th, Seattle, June 28th and 29th. To sign up for these, just go to schwab.com forward slash events. These events, these events are free, okay? So if you can get there and and uh, you're you're more than happy, you're more than welcome to join us for those events. They are very popular. So I'd encourage you to check those out if at all possible. Okay, so with that, let's just go ahead and jump right in here and get underway here. And to do that, I'm gonna bring up the Thinkorswim platform here. What I want to start off with is actually this this Google trade that we put on. This was a it started off with uh, this started off as a short put vertical. In fact, let's pull up the numbers. So I'm going to come over here. Oh, by the way, the platform we're using here, this is the Thinkorswim downloaded desktop software. This is the most robust platform that you that you have availability to. And great platform, has a lot of versatility and a lot of functionality. On our platform right here, I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to click on the monitor page. And under monitor, I've got activity and positions. Then underneath that, I have Google right here, and this shows a history of the recent Google trades we put in here. Notice right here that we started off here with a short put vertical. This trade came under pressure, so we opted to convert this from a short put vertical to an iron butterfly. And in doing that, basically what we did is we added a short call vertical um, with the short put vertical, sharing the same short strike price. Now, when you do this, it's usually best to do it if you decide to do it, as the price is drifting through your short strike price, that's where you'll get your greatest credit on the short call vertical. And that's what we did here. Notice our original trade here on the 137, 136 put short vertical, we've got a 21 cent credit, which, which, which is okay based on the metrics we usually look at here. Then we added our short call vertical and we captured a credit here of 42. So basically just kind of review this a little bit as far as what happened here. I'm going to grab a little drawing tool here and do my best with regards to doing a little bit of freehand drawing here. So right here, when on the, when we had this trade right here, our risk was, you know, our, our theoretical, these are all theoretical numbers, our theoretical max loss was the distance between the strike prices minus the credit. So we started off with about $79 worth of risk. When we added the butterfly, when, when we added when we added the short call vertical, and in effect having having an iron butterfly, we picked up an additional credit of 42 cents. So we can take 42, that additional credit right there, and we can subtract that from our 79 right there. And I believe that puts us, what is it? I'm just doing the math in my head. Forgive me if this is wrong, but I think we're sitting at about 37. So our risk dropped, dropped approximately, I'm saying approximate numbers from about 79 down to 37. However, 
The risk reward outlook on this also changed, and changed, changed to a great extent. This would be our typical short put vertical. The risk reward usually looks something like this. Where our profitability doesn't matter how high the price of stock goes, would still be sitting in a theoretical profitable situation. Also notice the, the relationship between reward. There's our reward zone and risk right here. Again, this is typical with regards to short verticals because they do have a relatively a theoretical high probability of success. And high probability of success is usually defined as something that is greater than 50%. When we made our conversion here, we decreased our amount of risk here, but we also severely limited our area of profitability. After this is done, our, our risk reward graph looks something more like this. We're, we're now we're in a situation where we have a higher level of reward here because we've got these two credits right here. Our risk decreases like this 37 right here, but now we have to basically close very close to our short strike price sitting here 137, very, very close to it. So when you, when you, when you choose to do something like this, in a, in a way you're kind of throwing in the towel. You're, you are, you're leaving yourself a little narrow window of possibility here with regards to profitability, but in some ways you're throwing in the towel and you say, you know what, I'll go ahead and take this, but I'm just gonna decrease my risk down to this area right here, realizing that, I'm, that from a statistical standpoint, I'm highly likely to incur that particular loss right there. So that's basically what was done here. And then notice that we notice that we just have this action here. So um, nothing was done to this iron butterfly. So what would happen holding this through the expiration? Well, from a theoretical perspective, we want to see where Google was at on the expiration day, which, which was here on March 15th. Let's just take a quick look, go and pull up the chart here for Google. And on March 15th, this is the day right here. That's the 14th. Here's the 15th right here. We closed at 141.18. 141.18. So what does that tell us? Well, we closed well outside our iron butterfly because we closed out to the upside from a theoretical perspective. Our short put vertical would expire worthless, but our short call vertical, both of these legs would be in the money on the expiration. So they would, so they would be exercised, okay? which basically means that what, what, what would occur here is we have this short 137 right here. Okay, so we've, we've agreed to sell someone the stock for $137. Of course, they're going to they, they're gonna exercise that right because the price of the stock is selling for higher than that. They can buy it for 137 and turn around and sell and make a profit. So we know that we know that this would be exercised because it would be in the money. Do they have to be in the money to be exercised or assigned? No, they don't have to be in the money. Okay, but typically they are. Now, because the price was was as high as it was, typically what you'd be looking at it would be something called same day substitution. However, you'd want to call your broker just to make sure. And if you've got same day situation uh, going on with your account, what will typically happen is the broker will automatically come out here and exercise your 138. So your broker would come out here and buy the stock for 138 for you, turn around and sell it to satisfy this 137. And that would and and then that would basically that would basically take care of both of these options of money. The loss on that transaction right there would be the one dollar. And then you and then you you take that loss of one dollar, then you subtract from that your credits over here. So your net loss from a theoretical perspective would be about thirty-seven dollars. Now again, do keep in mind that these are all these are all theoretical numbers. There's also a possibility that if you think about Let's say the price of stock went up to 137.50. What would happen in that situation? Well, the, well, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to exercise your right at 138. You'd want to come in and buy it at 137.50, and then turn around and sell it for 137. In that type of scenario, again, you'd want to check with your broker to see if your broker has same day substitution or something close to it, where the broker basically sees that this thing is going into expiration and it's not seeing any action taken against it. And so your broker steps in and takes that action for you. Do keep in mind that when that occurs, there's probably gonna be transaction costs above the normal transaction cost because the broker gets it, gets involved to a much greater to a much greater extent. So the, the best thing to do is not to forget the trade, okay? <laughs> and come in here and take care of it yourself. And if you're sitting here and, and you're sitting there on the expiration day, 
rather than exercising these frequently, what you can do is you can just close these out. And the difference in these will typically be about a dollar on the expiration day as you are going into expiration. So it'd be basically be about the same difference. OK, you just you would just you would just be avoiding some of those extra costs that would be involved with the broker if the broker gets involved with regards to same day substitution or something along those lines. OK, but that's basically what happened here on Google. So we did have a losing trade here on Google. Now, just a, a, a little bit of a recap, and we do have a fair we do have a fair amount of losing trades. So we, we don't want to lose sight of that. But overall, we've been doing these trades going back to July of 2020. This is our 197th trade that has been completed. Over those 197 trades, we've been successful on about 82%, which means we've been unsuccessful on about 18%. Our average return on risk has been about 16.4%. That average return on risk does take into consideration our losing trades. Our average time in the our average time in the trades has been about 13.8 days. So just a little bit of review of the numbers. This is a paper trading account, and it does tend to be more generous than an actual live trading situation. Okay, so with that, as long as we're talking about our positions, let's come over here and see our existing positions right here. It looks like we're in pretty good shape. It looks like Netflix is showing a profit here. What do we got as far as time? Let's take a peek at these guys as far as time. Oop, it looks like we probably want to do something here on NVIDIA. This, this in, uh, our short put vertical on NVIDIA is going to be expiring this Friday. So we can look to either, either look for these options to expire worthless, or we can go ahead and get out of the trade right now and take whatever, whatever level of profitability we have here, which is $387 here or approximately that much. Okay. So what would be our max gain here? So we have three contracts. We're sitting here at about 387. Um, let's pull up our account statement for NVIDIA here and see what we got going on here. So this is NVIDIA and this appears to be our short put vertical right here. Let's see, where is it? Here's our vertical right here. So it looks like we got, we got a dollar 30 credit and we had three contracts. So let me grab a calculator here. So our theoretical max gain on this would be our credit which would be a dollar thirty. I'm just going to take one hundred and thirty dollars here. Then we're talking about we're talking about a hundred shares here. So one hundred and thirty dollars times three, because we had three of these short verticals. So our theoretical max gain would be three ninety. And if we come back over here, we can go ahead and close out the trade for three eighty seven. Now, if we uh, do, we want to go ahead and close out the trade at at three eighty seven today. Or do we want to hold off and look for this thing to expire worthless and capture the whole 390? I'm not even going to ask the question or take a vote on it because I think I have a pretty good idea of our of our uh, sentiment here with regards to risk. So we'll go ahead and retire this and take our profit on it. Okay, we're you know going to be basically taking about 97 percent of the maximum gain on that. So let me go ahead and close this and then let's see if we can exit this. Sometimes when these things Get so far out of the money, and we're sitting here at 888. This is a 730. Sometimes there is not a bid with regards to selling this long position here. It looks like we do have a little bit here, though. So, so to close this out on the Thinkorswim platform, so here's our short put vertical on NVIDIA. We'll put on another short put vertical here to kind of show you how to put those on. But as far as exiting the short put vertical, once you have them on here on the Thinkorswim platform, you can come again. To the monitor page, then come down here to activity and positions. Then down here you'll see you'll see your short verticals. And then to close one of these out, you just put your roll over the symbol right here, do a right click, choose create closing order. And here's our closing order to buy it back. We can buy it back for some of the neighborhood of one to three cents. We'll go ahead and try to buy it. We'll go ahead and try to buy it back for one dollar. But we may come, we may have to come up here to three dollars. Well, let's first of all Try to buy it back for one dollar here, and to do that, I'm going to do a confirm right here. And here's our little box right here. We always want to read what's going on here. This gives us kind of a synopsis of the trade. Uh, yeah, you always want to read what's in red here. Please know you've selected a weekly option series with non-standard expiration date. Let's go ahead and click on send, and it got filled. Now, now, folks, this is a this is a paper trading platform, and it tends to be more generous than a live trading situation. So you may live trading situation, you may have to go up a little bit in order to close that out. So do keep that in mind. Okay, so we close that one out. I'll go ahead and, and book that one and we'll include those in our statistics next time. With regards to other positions here, we have eight days left on Netflix. 
We're sitting here at 622.65. We're well above our short put. We're, we're well above our short put vertical, so that's in good shape. We come down here and we look at PayPal. We've got 23 days on PayPal. We're sitting here at 63.96. Our short strike price here is at 60. So this one's a little bit closer, okay? This one, of course, both of these, because we still do have a significant amount of time, we're not out of the woods on either one of these, but we're particularly maybe a little bit more concerned here with regards to PayPal when we're looking at the price in relationship to our short strike price. If this starts to drift down and it drifts down and goes across our 60 right there, well, then we can make a choice whether or not we want to convert this to an iron butterfly or possibly leave it and let things play out. By the way, that's something that I that I failed to mention. I do want to mention over here on Google, coming back over here on Google. Um, let's pull up Google here. There we go. Now, uh, Google came down here and it went right into our, it came down here and it sloped down here and it went right into our spread and we, and we opted to change it to an iron butterfly, right? What if we would have just left it alone? We would have been fine right? Because we had this very strong recovery right here and we would have captured our maximum gain. That's not entirely unusual. So we do want to keep that in mind. When you, when you convert something to, to a, when you convert a short put vertical to an iron butterfly to decrease your risk, you're also decreasing your theoretical probability that was in place when you first entered the trade. Because those theoretical probabilities that you're looking at when you first enter the trade, assume that you hold that position for the entire lifetime of that particular trade. Okay, so we want to keep that in mind. And in this particular situation, we would have been better just leaving it alone. Okay. All right. So we've kind of looked at that. And look at, so let's go ahead and look to see to add another new short vertical. We've seen this. We've we've discussed how to exit these on the Thinkorswim platform. Let's pull up our watch list right here. This is our one dollar wide liquid watch list. Just a reminder that uh, there is, if you if you if you look at your YouTube window and you go down to the bottom, there's a short description, and part of that description you'll see the word more. When you click on more, it opens up and gives you a more detailed description. Within that detailed description, you'll see a link that says how to build an option traders watch list, and that takes you through the process that we use to build our one dollar wide liquid watch list. It's not a perfect watch list, however, it does have a listing of stocks that are that are representative of all of the of, of all 11 of the major S&P 500 sectors, as well as a few additional um, stocks as well. And these stocks tend to have good liquidity for options trading. In other words, the slippage between the bid and the ask and price, the slippage between the bid and the ask price tends to be healthy. However, in different market conditions, those things do widen out. So we want to keep that in mind as well. Okay. All right, so I, I often get the question, hey, Ken, can you go ahead and share this? Well, again, I'd, I'd refer you to uh, clicking on more on the description. In there, you'll see the link. You'll also see a link for the actual watch list itself, but I would suggest you just use that as a beginning point and, and look at it and, and then make it your own with regards, to adding, with, regards to adding, with regards to adding additional stocks. Also, while we're talking about the YouTube window, um, look in the lower right-hand corner there, you'll see a little subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed to the Trader Talks channel, I would strongly encourage you to go ahead and subscribe now by clicking on that. That helps to keep you up to date with the latest and the greatest that we have coming, coming available to you here on the Trader Talks channel. Okay, so here we have our $1 wide liquid watch list. I've added the custom column implied volatility because I want to bring the highest levels of implied volatility up to the top. And the reason for that is because the higher the level of implied volatility, Theoretically, the greater the premiums are, and since and since short verticals capitalize on on hefty premiums, so to speak, the higher the premiums are, generally speaking, the higher the potential reward to risk is given any particular probability. We do want to be a little bit cautious, though, because there's a reason those implied volatility numbers are high, and part of the reason for that is because these stocks are expected to be rather volatile. So for that reason, if we come over here and we look at this listing, what we typically do in here is, we'll, is we will bypass the top 10. So I come over here and I've got the highest here is Micron, Tesla. I'm going to count down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to be I'm going to be by, I'm I, I'm going to look to to uh, to just bypass the top 10 there. Now sometimes we'll go with number 10. Take a look at. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look. We'll go ahead and take a look at AMAT and possibly one other. 
to be honest with you, before the session started, AMAT was not in the top 10, okay? It was actually down here at about 11 or 12, so these things are dynamic and they do change, but let's go ahead and take a look at our number 10, AMAT, realizing that a lot of times we'll pass on this one because it is in the top 10. Let's take a look at the chart here, we'll pull it up and see what we got here with regards to AMAT. So here's AMAT, now in here we, we have been we have been using the Fibonacci tool. We'll go ahead and use the Fibonacci tool here for AMAT just to kind of see where we're at. You can see overall the stock the stock the stock would be considered to be rather bullish. You know we have the we have we have the the short term moving average staying well above the longer term. The price primarily staying above it, but recently breaking below it. But it is interesting in breaking below it. It's found this it's found this rather strong support level right here. In fact, if we want to identify that right here, let's go ahead and I come right across there. See how that how the, how the stock has found this support level right here. Let's just see. So that's that support level is sitting there at one ninety six forty two. We might want to take a look at that to see if, to see if that kind of coincides with potential support levels when we're looking at Fibonacci retracements. Okay, so but we can look at that now. If, if we were to take a trade on this one, this, this trade is sometimes referred to as a falling knife because the underlying price is moving down here. Now it's actually bounced up the last couple of days, but still it's kind of, it's primarily been moving down here and, and but it has moved down to a, to a significant support level. Let's go ahead and draw in our Fibonacci uh, levels here as well, just kind of get an idea of where we're at. Now when you're doing Fibonacci's, you want to look at the most recent run to the the most the most the most recent run, and when we're talking about a recent run, we need to have both a support level and a resistance level. Okay, so this is I'd be looking and saying this is where the most recent run run be, run started was right here, and up here is the most recent pullback. Now it could come down here, and bounce, and continue to go up and continue the run, but as far as completed, we have a peak here and we have a trough here. So we'll start off here because we want to look at the retracements rather than, rather, than, rather than the extensions. We're going to start at the bottom in drawing our Fibonacci uh, ratios here. Now, again, to draw the Fibonacci ratios and to pick them up on the Thinkorswim platform, we can come down here, and this will show us our tools that we can use, or in the chart itself, we can hit our mouse button, and that'll bring up our tools here as well. This is the Fibonacci uh, re, this is the Fibonacci retracements tool. I'm going to start right here at the low point, and I'm going to come up here. I'm going to start here at the lowest close and come up here to the highest close. Okay, so I'm going to come right here, and let's start right here, and I'm going to come up here, and we'll terminate right there at the highest close. I want to come up just a little bit more to get the highest close, and it's sitting right there, okay? So you can see that this, this is the support level we're seeing on the chart. It's fairly close to the Fibonacci level, but it's not sitting right on it. Okay? One of the things we can look at, though, is we can look at this Fibonacci level. So that looking at AMAT here, and I've just drawn the Fibonacci uh, ratios right here. We identified this as a support level. Then the next, the Fibonacci level just below that is the 38.2. And that price level, let me just zoom in on that so we're making sure here. And by the way, on the Thinkorswim platform, when you have different uh, studies up here, if you want to elongate things, get a little bit more detail, you can just come over here in the uh, right-hand side and pull it up like this, okay? And so that shows me my 38.2 right there is at 193.95. So one of the things we can look at is if, if we can sell a short put vertical, um, below 193.95, then we'd have this level right here, that's at 196, we'd have that as a support level. It's kind of, you can kind of look at this as a little bit of a moat protecting us. Now, when I use the term moat, I kind of go back to the medieval times with the castles where they dug, dug, dug those trenches around the castle. You can call this maybe a trench around our short puts down here, okay? So this would be our first moat here sitting right here. First level protection would be 196. Then our Fibonacci, level right here, sitting right there at the um, at the 193.95. That would that would be a secondary thing. So if we can come down here with uh, short put vertical below 193.95, we have two levels of potential protection. Does that mean that the, the does that mean that the trade's going to work out? No, it doesn't. Okay. But it it um, 
it can possibly help or put us in a better in a better situation than if we than if we didn't have these tools to take advantage of. By the way, after you've done this and you stretch things out, you can come up here, uh, right up here where you have your your price access settings. Click on that and take it back here to auto to go back to where you were to begin with. So we want to be down below basically 193. The price of the security is 201. So let's see what we have here as far as strike choice. I'm going to come up here to the trade page, hit trade. In here, we've usually gone out some of the neighborhood of 20 to 30 days. We tend to lean towards a shorter time period because we don't have to forecast quite so far. So if I come over here and I've got, here's 195. These are the puts, these are the calls. And I'm sitting here, I wanted to be below the 193. So if we could get a decent credit, and I don't know that we can, but if we could do a 190, 185 and get a credit that would be respectable, then perhaps we'd be interested in doing that. In here, we, we like to have our trades, so we get a return of about 1% for each day that we're in the trade. This would be 23 days, okay? We'd also like to have a probability of success of 70% or higher. The delta on this is a 22. So the that's 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 our short that's our short strike price. If it has a 22% probability of getting into trouble, then the inverse of that is going to be 78. So it would be a, it would have a 78 78% theoretical probability of success. So I'm going to do a to bring up our short vertical on the thinkorswim platform then. So I'm up here again, I'm on trade, I'm on all products, I've opened up the option chain. Here's my put side. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a right click on the short put, the 190. I'm going to use the bid price because we're selling it. I'm going to do a, a right click there. Then I have this menu that comes up. I just want to go, I just want to go one strike wide. So it's going to be $5. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to choose sell. If I wanted to go wider, I'd go deep and wide, but I don't want to go wider. I just want to go five bucks. So I'm going to do sell. I'm going to come up here and choose vertical. Okay. That gives us a credit of about somewhere in between 87 and 93 cents. Let's say that we can, let's say that let's, we're, we'll go ahead and we'll try to get filled at 93, but just for, uh, if, in case we have to come down here, let's run the numbers based on getting filled at 90 rather than 93, okay? Well, if that's the case, and we're sitting here, the, the distance between the strike prices is five bucks here, right? So if we're getting, if we get filled at 90, then our theoretical risk is going to be the five dollars minus the ninety cents. That's going to be four ten. So if I take 0 0.9 here and divide that by four dollars and ten cents, I'd be looking at a return of about twenty two percent over twenty three days. So we're a little bit shy of the twenty three days, but our probability of success is pretty healthy. It's it's significantly greater than seventy. It's sitting at seventy eight percent. I'll do here in the interest of time because we don't have a lot of time. Okay, <laughs> we'll go ahead. We'll play the part of the investor that's okay with a return that's a little bit less than 1% for each day that in the trade. And the trade off on that is our theoretical probability is going to be 78 because one, the one, way to, one way to calculate that is just take 100 and minus the delta. And that gives you your theoretical probability of success right there. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and try to get filled at the 94. If we were to get filled at the 94, then we take 94 here and divide that by. That's going to be four dollars and six cents, right? So that so that would give us the twenty three the the theoretical twenty three percent return on risk right there. Okay, so well, let's see what we can do. Let's go ahead and try to get filled at ninety four. If if not, we're okay moving down to ninety. We probably don't want to go down much below ninety. So with regards to position sizing, then that would be the other thing we want to look at right here. So we're risking about four. Let's just say four hundred and fifty bucks. Let's say we're okay with a thousand dollars of risk. Then we can take 1,000 here, divide it by our theoretical risk of about 450, and that would suggest we could do two contracts. So we'll go ahead and do two of these right there. Okay, so we're all set up here. And let's come over here and do confirm. Right there, confirm, and then we got a little box right here. We've got, please note you've selected a weekly option series with non-standard expiration date, okay? I got buying power effect in here. I'm not sure what this illegal illegal minus one share is. You know, maybe when we hit this thing, the order's not going to go through. Maybe that's related to the time shut down, to the electricity getting shut down here. I'm not sure about that. Okay. But here's our cost of trade, including fees and commissions and the likes. So we want to review those things and 
I want it to come in here too. Yeah, I don't want it to go into individual. Let me come out here and choose edit. And I want to come back over here to short verticals. Because that's where we want it to go. We want it to go into our short verticals area. Come over here and do confirm and send. And that took care of our illegal thing. I, I, it looks like the illegal, illegal thing was related to we were just in the general part of the account or possibly or possibly we're in the part of the account that, that goes by by different rules, okay, as far as options trading and the like. So here we have our our breakdown here with the fees and everything related to that. Please note you've selected again non-standard expiration. We've got that, and let's go ahead. Now it's going into our short verticals, which is where we want it to go. And let's go ahead and click on send here and see. Okay, so we actually so we're actually able to capture a 94 credit. Now again, investors. This is a paper trading application. It tends to be more forgiving than an actual live trading account. So we don't want to lose sight of that. All right, investors. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap things up here for today. Let's come over here and take a peek over here. And here is our new trade here on AMAT sitting right there. If we want to take a quick look, it looks like we do have a couple minutes here. We can come over here to the Analyze page. We can come over here to Risk Profile. And we can, there is our short put vertical, as I mentioned, on the short put vertical, we're usually, we're usually stand to, we're usually risking substantially more. Here's zero right here. There's our level of risk there. Okay, that's the, that's the 400 and so dollars. We're, we're doing two contracts, so it's going to be $812 of risk here, an opportunity with regards to profitability making 188 why would we enter a trade with an inferior risk reward situation like this? Because the theoretical, again, it's just theoretical, the theoretical probability of success is going to be greater than 70. In this case, it's sitting at about 78% when we entered the trade, okay? You can actually identify that over here by doing that. So we're all squared away there. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap stuff up here, okay? All righty, everybody. So hey, just a little bit of a reminder, you can follow me on X. My X handle is at Ken Rose CS, and I, I post things on X related to this series as well as, as well as others investing. A big thanks to Michael Fairborn for being over there in the chat window and helping out. I see that Mike's answered a whole lot of your questions. I also encourage you to follow Mike on X. He posts a lot of great information over there. Also, circle your calendars. I believe Mike teaches a, a covered calls and short put session. Mike, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's on Mondays, if that's not right. If you could chat over there the correct time. That would be great. So you don't want to miss that either. So what do we do here today, investors? Well, we defined short verticals. We did, a little, we did a little bit of that. We talked about important considerations and numbers, some of the basics for selection, entry, and exit considerations. And then we follow the steps as far as placing a trade, the steps that we usually follow in here on a weekend and a week out basis. Hey, everybody. Thanks again for joining us here today for Short Verticals. Um, sorry about the power. There's not a whole lot I can do about that. I'll have to call Murray Power. That's my power company and ask them what in the world was going on. But I hope you have a great, a great afternoon, a fantastic evening, a wonderful rest of your week. And hope to see you back here again next time where we'll see how our existing trade on AMAT is doing as well as our other trades and also look to add additional trades as well. Bye, everybody. Thanks again, and we'll catch you later.